beautiful book, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew, that's, he's not paying me, right? So I do that completely on my own terms. Because I love the book so much already, and I'm just on page 19. So the story goes, or the story is called Plato's Blockbuster. When you were born, you were transported directly from the womb to the to seat in to sit from the womb to seat in a movie theater it's where you live where you're supposed to grow old and die just go with it okay a film endlessly plays on the screen it is a movie full of love and hate fear and courage lifelong grudge, grudges and soul healing forgiveness there are flashy images accentuated by catchy music. The drama is intense. The action is like Michael Bay meets the Wachowski siblings on the 4th of July. And the story twists and corkscrews unpredictably. And the movie never ends, at least not while you are alive. You don't know it's a movie. You have no concept of what a movie theater is. This is just life. You were born here. Staring into the moving pictures is the only reality you know. It's all there is. Every seat in the theater is full of people just like you. Birth into chairs, hopefully comfortable, hope, hopefully comfortable ones. None of the people look at each other or look anywhere but towards the screen. The film is the only reason to be here. The only reason to be anything. After decades of this, you feel unsettled. Something is off. You feel empty. You feel like you're missing something. And how have I been here for so long without having to get up and pee? Some critical thinkers may be wondering that. To which I reply, don't think. Thinking is dangerous. In a bizarre bewildering moment your neck turns just inches to the left the first time you've ever moved the muscle the sensation is intoxicating dizzying suddenly your eyes perceive the screen from a slightly new angle the possibility or even the concept of this had never occurred to you before not only does your focus shift away from screens from screen center you also see the right sides of the faces of people sitting in the rows ahead of you. Before, you'd only seen back, backs of heads in distinct silhouettes. Now you can make out details illuminated by the film's eerie blue light. You see earrings, glasses, beards, varying skin tones. What was once indistinct and un uninteresting is now fascinating and unique. This is an absolute revelation. You and your entire perception of your world changes and you wonder, what else am I missing? What else is there to see? Determination builds. After much deliberation and apprehensiveness, you turn your head some more. First, all the way to the left, then to the right, up and down. You see walls, ceiling, motionless people all around you, their eyes tra trained strictly and lifelessly to the screen. The movie doesn't seem interesting anymore. Your attention has shifted to comprehending the space outside the movie. You cannot tolerate sitting here anymore. It's time to learn to use your legs. Aren't my muscles atrophied beyond repair by now, you say? How have I survived this long without eating? Shh, don't even think, I replied. I said, do not think. You ignore me and stand. You glorious rebel. You wander about the auditorium, viewing the audience of zombies. None of them make a peep, lest you stand between their eyes and the screen. Then they protest with startling, gnarling, incoherent snarls. Your most fascinating discovery yet arrives when you notice that the images on the screen seem to be projected from a light that's source is a small window at the upper back of, of up, up, upper back wall of the room. What does it mean? 
is the light god, you find your way through a set of double doors at the rooms where, as you cross the threshold, your mind is shattered from the overstimulated stimulation of bright lights and surreal colors. Scents and sounds you've not imagined vividly permeate your senses. How could this be? What, what is real? After some exploring, you discover a chamber back of the window you saw from inside the auditorium, the source of the light. You peer back to the depths of the theater below and see the movie still playing out on the screen. It seems much less engrossing from here, small, artificial, meaningless. Without warning, the screen goes dark and you instantly hear voices from the auditorium below, snarling and growling grotesquely. You observe your surroundings and realize that you're standing directly in front of the light that projects the movie, blocking it from reaching the screen. You quickly step aside, allowing the projection to sedate the grumbling and groaning from the seats below. Now you investigate the source of the light itself. Deci decidedly, it's not God. It's just a machine, a box. We've all been, we've all been had, tricked, those people down there, they have no idea. I need to tell them. And so you return to the theater. You tell the patrons what you've uncovered. They rip into you with their empty, stupefied eyes. They can't comprehend what you've seen. They know only the world on the screen. Any other concept beyond what they know is foreign and unbearably uncomfortable. They hate you for interrupting their movie. One of them aggressively lashes out at you, tries to force you to the floor. Another bites and claws at you like a beast, drawing blood from your arm. Several figures stand together and walk towards you. Lies, they chant, heresy. Not wanting to see what happens next, you sprint towards a door labeled exit. You thrust into it, opening it, spilling yourself out into a bright white hallway. Another door awaits at the, end, at the hall's end. You stop a moment to catch your breath and realize that no one is following you. You peek back into the auditorium. No one is even standing anymore. Everyone's quiet, just watching their stupid movie. You reflect on how you'd gotten up and explored by your own choice. Due to your own curiosity and drive, Nobody else could have made that choice except of you. And now you cannot make that choice for anyone else. You cannot make them see the truth or to understand that which their minds have formed no prior, no prior framework to comprehend. So you pivot back towards the door at the end of the hall. What could be on the other side, you wonder? Each step you take brings you closer and closer as the anticipation builds. With a push, the door opens. Utterly blinded by sunlight, you fall into a heap on the ground and die. Well, who you were before now dies. Anyway, your eyes slowly adjust, your vision returns. You see the sky for the first time, clouds, trees, cars, there is grass and pavements, rocks, mosquitoes and birds, all of this beautiful beyond anything previously fathomable. Once again, you wish you could tell the others, show them that they'd kill you or worse. You're alone in the light, lonely in reality, isolated by shedding away the delusion, the deception. The heart hangs heavy in desolation, but your soul soars at the taste of fresh air. Is there anybody out there? You take your first awesome defiant steps into the real world. I had goosebumps when I was reading that, um, and I think I've never connected with words in a book as much since conversation with God, so. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew, for this.